come down and see how the ice is forming up here at the lakes. And it's not so bad, not so bad. You can see through pretty good. Definitely maybe if you take a look at, let's see if we see any cracking here. Take a look at the cracks. Yeah, the little cracks right here. You can see that maybe, maybe just under an inch thick. So it's certainly not safe to get on yet. But soon, guys, the way the ice is forming, you can see the bands going through it and everything. Boosting up. We found snow geese, guys. Look at that. I'm going to change my lens so we can get a better look at it. Alright, oh, that's a little better view of them. Taking shelter here out of the wind, it's a pretty white cap out on the lake as you can see. We spotted these guys and yeah, that's a young one. Oh, and a little duck or something with them too. Hanging out with them. <laughs> that's cute. Looks like possibly like a juvenile snow goose or gray goose. Blue goose, I can't remember. Snow goose, I'll look it up at home. Yeah, I'm sure that's it. I think that's their young from this year. That's mommy and daddy. And those two little duckies hanging out with them. Those could be American coots. They got the, what looks like the white bill, so. Anywho, guys. Just thought we'd get a shot of them. They sure are pretty. So yeah, guys, it's uh, freeze up time, so it's just not safe to go on the ice. It's too thin and where there is open water, it's pretty much pure slush and ice. So what I've done over the last week so far is started setting up a little hobby room. So <clears throat> just decorating and stuff in here. This I've got a lot of uh, fly tying supplies and stuff like that. I still have to finish sorting this out. And this drawer here, a lot of artificial materials and stuff like that. So there's things like my dubbing and things like that. Ooh. My flash, my crystal flash for adding a little sparkle to the flies and stuff. I got my flies here, poppers, all that good stuff. These ones are really cool. These ones are more of a, a realistic look. But anyway, yeah, and then I got my fishing reels there and my driftwood fly tying station. I keep all my tools there. So my bobbin threader, and hackle pliers, bobbin, a couple of different tools there. So pliers, my stacker, and then I put some doweling in there to hold different threads and wires and stuff. Spot for my scissors, little reference guide. I do a lot of stuff off the top of my head, but every now and then it's it's kind of nice to get a, a, a parts list for your flies, if you know what I mean. A little something to dry flies on and a couple of ongoing that I haven't finished trimming up yet. And then just different furs and stuff. A lot of deer hair and elk and stuff like that, some squirrel tail, different colors, so different little bucktail pieces, whole deer hair. I've even got a, a full moose beard somewhere here and I collect some, you can see this bag here, it's a bunch of different random feathers. I got blue jay feathers and stuff in there, that's just borax powder, guaranteed to kill off anything. So yeah, I just got it all on my pegboard, different items, goose biot and stuff, dry fly hackle. I got a couple layers of it there, different colors and stuff. So got a whole pheasant hide, so it's got the rump and all that good stuff. Lots of reusable feathers. There's technically in feathers here, there is hundreds of flies just sitting right there. So, you know, it'll be, a, it'll be a while before I need any of my base materials, certain specialty ones I'll need. So I'm there here. I got all my ice fishing stuff, dug it out. My rods are in there. And, my tent and all that good stuff, charging the battery right there as we speak. 
Ooh, my mystery tackle boxes. These three are unopened stuff for open water. And one of them is actually an ice fishing tackle box. So excited to try that one out. It's a little multi-species ice fishing box. But anyway, yeah, so this is what I've been up to, guys. Been creating myself a little fly tying station and everything. And just that way I can uh, I can easily videotape and, you know, continue the content for you guys through the winter. So I thought I could finish off the video, everybody. Just uh, with maybe showing you how I tie up my, uh, my pike ice fishing Quick set, quick set rig. So, things I use a couple of travel hooks here, guys, as you can see. Two of those, a couple of uh, sleeves and barrel sleeves here. Oh, it's that way. So, the barrel sleeves, as you guys can see, and that's two of those. A split ring from, doesn't really matter the brand, but some split rings there and stuff one elastic band and one swivel a little bit of floor carbon I'm going to use some 25 pound and then some the 25 pound floor carbon and then some not too kinky leader 30 pound first things first We'll do the beginning part. We'll do this in two stages, well, kind of a couple of stages. We'll take this, uh, pretty much whatever knot you guys might want to use, it's totally up to you. I usually do for this, I like the way that the clinch knot stands off. So, it wraps, five, eight, whatever. Whichever ones you like. You could use whatever knot you want. You want to use a Palomar knot, use a Palomar knot. One last twist. Tuck it through. I'm using fluorocarbon. It can also be just monofilament. You can even use braided line if you want. I prefer using this because it's a little more invisible. Lots of lubrication. Sometimes it just doesn't want to slide. I'm trying to try to avoid that line burn. Nice 90 degree. Big set of scissors for this, but that's all right. Snip off the tag and, and then you can make this kind of whatever length you want. I'm going to do, oh, I don't know, about a foot and a half, two feet. Turn that off. We are done with the spool. And just feed this through your split ring. And again, whichever knot you want, whether you're doing a, a clinch knot or a palomar or, you know, whatever one you're comfortable doing. So I usually do a clinch for, for a lot of applications. Holy. Glasses are giving me grief today. All right, let's pinch out. I need more light in the right spot. Don't let your eyes get old, guys. Good stuff through the hole. There we go. So that'll be the first piece of our rig, which is this piece you end up putting on to your tip up. So just a swivel, you put it onto your put it onto your tip up, and that's going to hang down. We can just set this off to the side now, guys, and we take the bite wire. We take maybe pull it off a little bit, eh? Yeah, I think that'll work better. Got the sleeve. 
use the elastic there just to reorganize it a bit better guys so one sleeve onto the wire to the hook back through the barrel sleeve and then back through the barrel sleeve one more time. When we do this, this is gonna help lock it into place, guys. Pull some slack here. Just pushing some slack back through the barrel. That's gonna give that tag end a little more length. So I touch tighter again. And that's gonna work wonderfully. Take our crimpers and crimp that barrel sleeve. Always get it good. So that's on really nice. It does have a little bit of a a loose end sticking out so you can always just kind of bend that up and trim it off a bit so it gives you a little more free motion there now you can trim off pretty much you have to decide now what length you want to have this leader at so you know, depending on the size of your bait, one hook's gonna go on the nose, you're gonna add a second hook and it's gonna go on the tail of the fish, right? For your bait. So imagine your average piece of bait fish, and that'll probably do it. Give yourself a little extra, trim that off. In comes your leader piece that you made before. You slip your split ring over the wire, just like that. And then take your barrel sleeve, Put your barrel sleeve on, take your other hook, feed, and just like before, feed it back through the barrel sleeve. Bring that shorter. Back through again. this time to make it so I don't get a kink in my line I'm gonna hold and I'll pull this end instead that's gonna work great take our crimpers And then it's just a matter of trimming off your excess wire. And then it'll be one final little step. All right. Like that, the last step guys is to take the elastic here, pinch your O-ring and your wire together, feed your elastic so that it goes through the O-ring and over top of your wire, like so. You can even go half and half. So you can kind of hang both, they're both inside the elastic, as you can see. And then just pass one end of the elastic through the other. Give that a little cinch down. You've effectively hand shake your uh, 
your elastic onto this and it kind of it pegs that right so when, when you take your bait fish you attach of course this end to your leader you see it sort of suspends that you feed your bait fish through the elastic band which keeps it nice and tight up to the wires Hook in the front, hook in the back. Say, say the, the the pike takes this hook. You just give it a tug, and out she comes. And you give you that metal leader. So again, wrapped it up. Same thing. Pike takes it there. It gives you that leader. So it gives you that length, and then the pike teeth are hitting this instead. It gives you double shot for for pulling either way. And if you're really lucky, you won't lose your bait. If your elastic falls off, the worst that's gonna happen is that this split ring is gonna come up and it's just gonna wrap itself. Here, we'll just pop this elastic off. So if it were to come undone, oh no, the split ring is just gonna come farther up onto the actual hook and even more distance between the fluorocarbon and the pike's teeth, if you know what I mean. So, you know, just when you use this, bring a package of elastics with you in case you need replacements, no big deal. But this rig, you can catch several pike with it. I mean, you know, eventually the bite wire is gonna wear out and you're gonna wanna do it again. But, you know, these sleeves, I just picked them up at the Bass Pro Shop and uh, they're not too kinky. You can find this all over the place, but this is a great rig. I've pre-tied it up and uh, I'm actually going to, uh, going to hang it now and i'm going to stretch the muscle or the, the memory out of this line so anyway guys i hope maybe i might have taught you something new it's a really cool rig and uh it's like i said you know it's it's just a different style of quick strike strike rig for pike and it really kind of doubles up your chances it makes it more likely you're only going to hook one hook into the fish but you got two different different directions it could be running and you just might hook it so you know head or tail however it grabs it you got to hook there you know what i mean anyway hope you guys enjoyed hope you guys learned something thanks for watching very much like comment and subscribe